For more than a decade, FTI has strived to become the leader in the aftermarket, performance, transmission, and converter industry. We've joined forces with McLeod Driveline Components under the leadership of Top Fuel Funny Car Pilot Paul Lee, and now have a larger distribution network, more resources, and more power. Come see us in the pits and ask how you can join the FTI family. It's not cheating. It is the competitive edge. The number one source of friction in your engine is not what you think. Piston rings rubbing against the cylinder walls generate more friction than any other part of the engine. More friction and temperature means more wear and less horsepower. Fortunately, the team at Total Seal knows how to reduce friction and wear through innovative piston ring design. If it takes a piston, Total Seal can build a better ring. This is WFO Radio. Hey everybody, WFO Radio is back. How you doing out there? Joe Costello in the studio getting ready for a big day at WFO. Hopefully you're out there, you're watching, you're enjoying either live on the first air on our YouTube channel and Facebook page and Twitter account. We even broadcast to Twitch. I don't know why. I don't know. Twitch, you got to be on Twitch. You got to do Twitch. Yeah, I do Twitch. I'm not on Twitch. Twitch is not working for us, but that's all right. It's trial and error. You throw a lot at the wall. You see what happens. But our good, tried, and true podcast feed is what keeps us going. Guys, Alan Reinhardt's going to be joining us on the show today. We're going to break down all the news, the big news, Austin Proc, big news, Vanson Hines, big news, Daniel Wilkerson, big news, Dean Marinas, all over the place. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. I am back from the Engine Performance expo we had a great time project pontiac we advanced the ball a lot and those of you who you know want to see the lowly pathetic track announcer get on the racetrack and struggle to do everything and you know mock you're gonna get that opportunity it's looked like it's coming to fruition slowly but surely we are gonna get there and i'm very excited about it had a great time up there at the engine performance expo i know a lot of our wfo radio listeners uh checked it out and uh, we'll be uh, inquiring about Project Pontiac. A couple of bits of news before I tell you about the people who make it possible. Then we'll bring on Reinhardt. No guests today. Just me and Alan kind of kicking it about all the news. The Austin Proc news, I think, is huge. The Robert Height news, I think, is very big. I was assured, and this is what is most important, right? Like right at the very beginning. A lot of people would drag it out. Right at the very beginning. 100% likelihood that Robert returns to the seat of the funny car. Now I did not hear that from Robert, but I heard it from John force racing. And uh, that's was most important, like medical procedure. What is that? Right. Everybody immediately gets worried. 100% confidence. He will be returning to the seat of that uh, race car, Cornwell tools, Camaro later on this year at some point. And that is what is most important. In the meantime, Austin proc, Jimmy Proc, Thomas Proc, Proc Family Funny Car. That's pretty exciting. We're going to talk to Alan about it moments from now. And we already have that whole crew scheduled for next week. Right. Jimmy, Thomas, and Austin all together on the show. We've also got Daniel Wilkerson going to be on the show later on this week on Thursday. And so Thursday, 12 noon, right before I head to the D5 Awards Banquet out there in Kansas, we're going to speak with Daniel Wilkerson and maybe Tim. We're working on trying to get Tim on, on, on that deal as well. So it's a, you know, a lot of family of funny car going on here. All right. Before we go any further, you know that this show doesn't happen by accident. We are sponsor driven and Patreon driven. And without these people, we would not be able to do what we do. It just simply would not happen the way we do it. Starting off with our new sponsor for 2024. More to come, by the way. CWTindustries.com. Randy Neal has been a big supporter of WFO Radio, jumping on board here in 2024. If it rotates, it can be balanced. It's as simple as that. Of course, you think about balancing, balancing a rotating assembly. Randy and CWT Industries has built an amazing machine that makes money because it's easy to use. It's simplified. It gets it right. We're going to learn a lot more about CWT Industries. We did a lot of up there at the Engine Performance Expo, and it's very exciting 
to see one of these machines in use. So turbochargers, superchargers, heavy equipment. If you're working on giant, you know, mining equipment, if you got something that rotates, it can be balanced. And these machines are top of the line getting the job done. I'm super excited about CWT Industries. We'll be learning about it. We'll be talking about it here on WFO Radio. And big thanks to those guys for coming on board. Of course, the folks at Foggett. You walk around. I was at Straub Technologies in Piney Flats, Tennessee. You go machine to machine. Every single machine has a can of Foggett. And I know what you're thinking. Like, well, isn't it for the inside of your racing engine and limited to the inside of racing engines for its usefulness? And the answer is absolutely not. One of the sub stories, of course, because I'm repping for Foggett, I listen for people talking about it and they're like different usages of the product in addition to its primary use, which is to protect the inside of your cylinders. At the conclusion of a night of racing, whether you've got a stock or super stock, like very finely honed engine to a bracket engine, there's no point in the extra corrosion and wear and tear. Go to foggit.com, go to amazon.com, or just wait because some of the big box stores are going to have it, like, you know, in the racing mail and order industry. Bernie Speed Shop, B U R N Y Z Z.com. Bernie's in Ocala, Florida. Someone was just asking me about Bernie's the other day. Like, is it really as cool as you say it is? And the answer is, uh, yeah, it is. And you'll all have the opportunity to go inside Bernie's the Wednesday before the Gator Nationals. The Wednesday before, when everyone's geared up trying to get that new Golden Gator. We'll be talking about that, the Golden Gator. The Golden Gator. Finally, we got a Golden Gator. But now we've got it. They're going to have a fan fest at Bernie's. And for me right now, you know, of course, go to the website, follow their social media. They're doing a great job pushing out a lot of the cool stuff on their social media. But to see the 100 square, 100,000 square feet, the body shop, all the different things, restoration, frame off restoration, consignment. If you're looking to buy a muscle car, an exotic car, if you're looking to sell a muscle car, an exotic car, they have the connections and they know exactly who to market to so you can get the most possible money. Way to go, Josh Hart. Appreciate you guys being on board. In 2024, FTI Performance Transmissions and Torque Converters to Land Florida. I was just there earlier this month. Dropping off, or last month. Dropping off a couple of Power Glide transmissions for Project Pontiac. Now they've got FTIparts.com. So you don't have to wait. Transmission Torque Converter Parts in stock. You don't have to wait. If you want those great FTI parts, you just call, you just order, you check out the website. Of course, FTI Performance Transmissions and Torque Converters, industry leader. We're proud to have them on board with WFO Radio. Of course, Phillips Connect, smart trailer technology, keeping you safe on the road, keeping you on time on the road. If you are in the transportation industry, reach out to me, Joe, at WFORadio.com, and we'll put you together with the folks at Phillips Connect. And then, of course, Total Seal Piston Rings, the leader in ring seal technology. Hartford's trying to turn the three into a number one and starting off the season with two cars at the Skag Pro Superstar Shootout. Dave Connolly going to drive one of them. We'll tell you a little bit more about samtech.edu, Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School, and Marvin Rodak's coffeeandgrills.com a little later on in the show. But right now, look at everybody commenting out there. The voice of the NHRA, Alan Reinhardt, joins us now. What's up, AR? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How's your uh, project complimentator coming? Oh, I saw you. This is Super A modified. It's turning into that. It's good. Cool. Joe, you're, uh, no, you, you put yourself in the room with those people and they all go, you know, Joe, while we're doing this, yes. why don't we just go ahead and upgrade a little bit? Right. He's right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I'm going to I'm I'm gonna keep I, you guys this thing. It's going to be, well, I shouldn't tell you, right? Like, cause uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, we're feeling like it's going to be five thirty five, five thirty five, five thirty five. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's going to make a thousand easy. It's not going to make a thousand easy. This is a it's Pontiac Joe. now and it's going to make under 800 horsepower. It, it, it better no, we're no. Gonna snap this car in half. My family heirloom is going to be destroyed <laughs> because we put too much power in it, which is why it got no, back. Joe, to then, the then you call Jerry Haas and you go, Hey, Jerry. Why don't we do a little project here? And pretty soon you're John Clegg. I'm telling you. I'm, telling you. I'm not going to argue with you, Alan. I'm just going <laughs> to try to prevent it from happening that Good way. Luck with that. I want to do super street racing. 
But we got this all Pontiac block. Uh, it, they had one at Butler and it uh, it went over to Straub Technologies. And it's really cool. Embry's the guy with the hat. Dave Bullock is on the right hand side. He worked at Roush Yates. He worked at Elmore. And now he's helping out Sandy Wilkins. So the folks at Rottler were like, Sandy, can you send Dave over to do Joe's block? And what's happening is the pressure is going right up. Like, oh my gosh, like all stars are touching this thing. Do they know it's a super street car? Oh my gosh. But um, what was amazing to me, Alan, and you know this, and maybe others do, but I don't think they do. You get a brand new casting that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is exactly where oh, no. it's supposed to be. Like all of our lifter board, all, every one of them, needed to be moved a little bit to get them absolutely right. The cam tunnel was not exactly right. And that's the whole point of a machinist. That's what a machinist does, takes what it is and makes it perfect. And watching Dave go through this process and uh, Joe Lee Woods, who is Dominators from NPK's daughter, who's 16 years old. She's learning to be a machinist at 16 years old. It's amazing. They're going over like the most minute of details. We're talking thousands, as you know. But yeah. I don't think fans even think about how much time goes into just a regular racing engine, let alone a pro stock racing engine. Well, there's a reason people like Carl Fultz exist. Because they have taken, like in the pro stock world, just as for instance, they have taken it down to a science. So if you want to build a pro stock engine, the easiest thing to do is to buy a block and send it to Carl Fultz and let him do all that stuff for you and then send it to you. If you want him to do your cylinder heads, he can do that as well because he's gotten to the point where he specialized at that. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's been interesting. Like my project, Timmy talking to guys that build these things and especially like the super stock engines that they're running these days, what they have to go to simply because the architecture and especially the machining, um, the machining capabilities from 60 years ago weren't anywhere near what they are now. And so all that stuff has got to be fixed. Um, the lifter boards, did you bush the lifter boards or are they just, uh, are they going to be? Not, they're, they're, they're just going to be as they are. They're not, we're not, see, there you go. We're not going comp eliminator. We would have had to bush the lifter boards. No, it's just going to be as it is uh, with this uh, version. And I guess they, okay, well, I would just, that's, that's a step, you know, depending on how close they are, if you can get them where you need to be, but what has become um, standard procedure, and especially in some of the older engines and some of the older blocks, you know, your newer block certainly isn't going to be as far out of, what would you you would consider a perfect spec because um just the the margin for error back then was a little bit bigger but what so guys to your point though so, we were able to get them correct because we went with a 905 lifter what is it 904 okay. 905 lifter so yeah. that increase in diameter was able was was why we were able to get them right without bushing them but i understand what you're saying um, yeah, the other the other way to do that is to put a bushing in and then machine the bushing. So if you have machined the bushing two thousandths off, nobody cares. But now the lifter's perfect. But yeah, if you're able to get there just by going over it, oh, so you put in big lifters, huh? Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's got super street written all over it. So, so John uh, Callies, John <laughs> Callies, which you might know, John, like uh, okay, so it's, it's gonna make it's, a thousand. Not gonna make a thousand. There's no way single <laughs> four barrel. It's not gonna make a thousand. I don't want to set the expectation. You know, we got to lower expectations now. Like this is gonna make 700 horsepower reliably. It's a <laughs> velocity engine for coming off the throttle stop, built for a very specific class. Like I want this to be an NHRA super street car and also good for some eighth mile bracket racing, as you know, because that's the last form of racing available here in South Florida. Um, but John Callies was the head of Pontiac's performance division through the 1980s and, you know, Callie's cranks and now works at Morel lifters. Sure. I'm doing the rotors on my street car and I'm like covered in just everything you can be covered in. And my phone rings and it's like, ah, who is it? Let me pick it up. And it's like, Joe, John Callie's, we want to send you lifters for project Pontiac. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Okay. So yes, it's, it's what you're saying. It's fun though. Right. Everybody hopefully will. Oh, of course it. it's fun. Of course. It's the fun. whole, the 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 you know watching Galvin out there this year and the way everyone like rallied around him 
right? Like we all wanted to see, we know what he's, what's going to happen. Like that's hard, man. People don't realize how hard it is. And you're going to go out there and put yourself on stage and give your announcer buddies the opportunity to mock you a little bit. If you feel right. Um, it, it looked like he had so much fun and it was really motivational for me to like, want to get out there even at the divisional level before we start in 2025. So I'm going to try to do that. And, um, yeah, I even got a plan to go run Orlando this year just to get some grading points. But nobody cares about me, Reinhardt. You know that. They can follow WFO Joe on Instagram and Twitter. They care about Austin Proc. They care about Daniel Wilkerson. They care about all these great stories. So let's start out with the big news of today. Thank you, John Force Racing, for releasing the news prior to our little program. Right? Like, typically in the past, it's like 2.01 p.m. Send it. Not, not this year, 2024. We finally got them. Release the news before WFO. And they did. Robert Height, medical leave. Going to have a procedure. But I've been told 100% confidence that he'll return to the seat of the car this year, which gives us this rare opportunity to see Austin drive his car. Pretty cool. It's definitely cool for Austin. Um, you know, some of the uh, some of the funding that they had last year uh, opted not to re up, is what I understand. So um, Austin's dragster, at least for the short term, uh, was not going to be on track, and that made him available. And for Robert, if there's something he feels that he needs to get done or needs to get taken care of, then uh, I don't think that anybody on the planet would tell him no. It's more important to drive your race car than to worry about your health. So. You know, the, the stars aligned. They've got somebody that can drive the car. They've got somebody that the sponsors are certainly already familiar with and are going to be happy with. And that will allow Robert to do whatever he needs to do, take whatever time he needs without being under the gun that you have to get back. You have to get back. So um, just wish Robert, you know, uh, I hope all, all goes well. I hope he has a speedy recovery. I hope he'll be back soon. And if anybody at JFR happens to be watching, I will tell you the same thing that I said on Twitter this morning. Uh, Robert, my door's always open. If you're going to be at the racetrack, you're not going to be driving, and you'd love to come up and sit in for a session. I guarantee you the fans would love to hear your perspective uh, from up in the booth, and you'd be welcome anytime. But most important thing, uh, take care of your health. Do what you got to do. And, again, the way the way it worked out with Austin being available to get in the car, you know, it, it makes the transition easier if you don't have to call, okay, hello, Cornwell. Okay, hello, Chevrolet. Okay, hello, um, you know, auto club. And uh, I want to introduce you to Joe Costello. We're thinking about having him drive the car this week. And then you have to go through an extra procedure. But right. while I guarantee you, when the calls went out to the sponsors and said, Hey, look, here's the situation. Robert's got something that he needs to get taken care of. Okay. We would like to put Austin Proc in the car. And they went, okay, there's no, you know, who or what? Well, tell me about this guy again. Uh, because he's already been out there. He's obviously a big personality. The sponsors know him. It, I don't know that you could come up with a smoother transition for something like this. If it has to happen, this is a good way for it to happen. The whole team proc deal, and they're going to join us next week on Wednesday. I know not everybody plans ahead, but put it in your phone and be ready to watch the show a week from tomorrow. Um, because from what I understand, we're going to have Jimmy Thomas and Austin together. That dynamic. Wow. If, you know, if you're one of those people who's a softy for the, you know, family racing thing and fathers and sons and fathers and daughters racing together, that team, there were moments where they all, you know, in their own way, got emotional about the thought of it. And here we are. Yeah, well, you know, until you can get Jill involved and grandma and grandpa, then the gold standard is still the Gordon family. So you know, and, and until you can take that step and make it all happen. No, I think it's, I think it's terrific. You know, I mean, you know, Jimmy has been involved as much as he could be with Austin's racing, even when Austin was driving the quarter midgets and doing the other stuff. If Jimmy could be there, if he could be, you know, moral supporter, being, he was always involved with that. He's always been very involved with, with his kids racing endeavors and other things. So the fact that they're all going to be now doing it as a family, uh, I think it makes it pretty special. I mean, you know, you look at what John, John Forrest did with his daughters. You look, you know, Kenny and Brandon Bernstein, you look at the, the dynamics of this happening, Warren and Kurt Johnson go back about as far back as you want to go. And I think it's great. Um, you know, I, I, if you're Austin, how could you not be excited about an opportunity to get in that car? And if you're Jimmy, how could you not be excited about the prospect of potentially winning a championship with your son driving the car? 
and you know they've got all the ingredients there to do it yeah okay so just a little kickback everybody's saying this thing's gonna make 950 horsepower let me put the brakes on it this is not a small block chevy or chevy with pontiac big chief heads this is a pontiac pontiac it's not making 900 horsepower guys not happening just moving on um i'm excited for no it. what you meant to say it doesn't have big chief heads yet <laughs> yeah exactly who knows <laughs> Uh, you know, again, hey, we world, were... Joe needs a set of big chief heads for Project Pontiac. Yeah, Send exactly. Gary Stennett. <laughs> Dark block. Send all the Gary Stennett. Gary's out there. Uh, probably bothered that I'm lo I'm raising expectations, lower expectations. We don't, you know, like I don't want to go 150 miles an hour in this thing. That's not happening. Anyway, next subject. Breaking news. <laughs> Revzilla, Revzilla, R E V capital Z I L L A set for title sponsorship for Vance and Hines Motorsports. Way to go, NHRA staff, recognizing that this show is breaking news here. Vance and Hines, a leading force in the world of pro stock motorcycle racing, has announced that motorcycle gear, parts, and accessories leader Revzilla will be their title sponsor for Vance and Hines team for the next two seasons. And the bike looks cool. Mission Foods still on on the livery, um, but uh, it's it's pretty cool that they have been able to bring it on. Uh, founded in 2007, an online retailer of motorcycle gear parts and accessories, Revzilla is now owned by parent company Kamado Holdings. In addition to its industry leading online presence, Revzilla has retail stores in Newport Beach, Denver, and Philadelphia, and uh, they will be on board with Vance and Hines for 2024 and 25. That's you know, more news. Awesome. Welcome to the NHRA family. I, I have to be honest, I'm not familiar with Revzilla, but I will definitely look into it now because, uh, well, as everybody watching knows, I have you know, yep. motorcycles yeah. that occasionally need accessories. So, uh, um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll have to look into them and, and see if there's anything that they do that, you know, I, I am always a big believer that if I'm spending money, I'd rather spend it with somebody that supports my sport. And, you know, when I go shopping for auto parts, when I go shopping for things that I need, I always go out and I support those companies that are involved in NHRA. So Revzilla will now be a go-to for uh, any of my motorcycle accessories that I need. Welcome aboard. Yes. Okay. So Facebook and, and user. And Joe needs a set of big chief heads. Big chief heads, stainless steel uh, <laughs> headers. No. <laughs> this Facebook user is Roger Richards. Roger Richards has been okay. in the hospital for quite a few days, but from oh. what I understand, he just got out or uh, is about to get out. I think that he got out, you know, battling stuff. We always talk about, you know, getting old is a bummer, but it beats the alternative. Roger, like he, he texted me, like, it'd be, you know, he was excited for the show to start up just to this, like our hangout that we do drag race, friends, hanging out online, talking about the stories Roger, this guy is a big part of everything we do. Such a great friend, such a wonderful person. I'm super happy that he is, uh, you know, uh, again, after 10 days in the hospital, he's out or getting out. That's great news. Well, Roger, get well. We'll, we'll be thinking about you, no doubt. Looking forward to seeing you back out there, uh, camera in hand and doing what you do. See, I think that's that's another problem. That's The winter break now is too long because... Yeah. If Roger had had, you know, another race next week and another race next week and another race next week, he wouldn't have had time to get sick. And so, you know, none of this would have ever happened. So I'm blaming right. I'm blaming the schedule makers for for Roger's issues right now. If he you know, if he'd had some place to be. Yeah. I mean, you how long have you known Roger? If there's some place he needed to be, he'd have been. There. Right. Yeah. And no. so Roger's yeah. so we need we need to get back to racing. Well, I'm gonna talk to you about that in, in a little bit. I have a like a a, a hypothetical i got a hypothetical okay. for alan reinhardt everybody out there we got wow like the whole world is tuned into wfo right now share the show beat the algorithm big news let me tell everybody some big news while we got a nice audience out there and then we'll move on to the daniel wilkerson dean marinas side of the universe um the wfo app it was the first media app in drag racing, not because I'm a genius, but because a good uh, high school friend uh, started a company, but then he sold the company and then the company was sold again and they're discontinuing that level of apps. So the WFO mobile app will soon sunset as in die, as in it's not going to work anymore after March. So I need everybody that loves the app to resubscribe to something else, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. And of course, my personal Twitter X and the WFO 
X account. That way, I, one thing that I will miss is being able to send the push notifications like, hey, everybody that's WFO connected. But that can really be accomplished with Twitter. Uh, the app was great, but it's no longer going to be available. And so I need everybody who gets their WFO experience through the mobile application to switch to something else. There's literally tens of options uh, to go to. So that's up to you. I prefer uh, Spotify or SoundCloud as where I get my stuff. SoundCloud is where we host our audio. And so that's the one I would get if I was choosing, but that's up to you. Um, okay. Now, you know, my, my, you know my level of computer expertise and technology expertise. Yes. Is there not somebody else you can go to to just have the app like redone? I mean, like if, you know, if a car dealer goes out of business, can you not just go to another car dealer to get, you know, your service? Yes. The answer is yes. But so I asked them, first of all, don't I own this app? Can I download it? Can I repost? And they said, no, you can't do that, whatever. And, and, and oh, OK, um, when the app was created, it was all encompassing and the easiest way for me to tell people how to get the show. That's why we had such great success early on. Now that podcasts and the YouTube and everything have been so widely adopted, I genuinely think it might not be necessary that people are getting their content already on all these other sources and to leave their other source to go to the WFO app is an unnecessary move. Just subscribe wherever you get your stuff, wherever it is. And it's going to be there because WFO is everywhere. We're on Amazon. We're in places, Podbean. We're in places that I've never sent them our RSS feed. I've never tried. So you're to like Roy, connect. you're like Roy Kent. Everywhere. He's here, he's there, he's everywhere. Since when right. do you watch Ted Lasso? I love Ted Lasso. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. What a great, positive, and uplifting uh, show that was. All right. So, Robert Hyde on the bench for the start of the season. Austin Proc behind the seat of the, the Camaro funny car for Cornwell and John Force Racing. Very exciting. Big news last week. I don't think we got to really get into it. I don't know when they dropped that news, but I think we had already done the show. Um, Justin Ashley was our guest and he could not say what news was about to drop, which was Tim Wilkerson has announced his retirement. Daniel Wilkerson is going to drive the car for the Skag factory team. So there's two stories there. Let's go at the positive story first, which is Daniel Wilkerson, someone that I, I can say that we both really like as just a person and we like as a personality who has proven that he can tune a funny car to race wins is now the driver of the Skag Mustang. I think this is exactly what the sport needs. Young, fresh personality is an understatement. Well, there had been talk about that happening uh, for a while. I think the succession plan always was going to be that when Tim decided to step back, that Daniel would be the one who stepped in. Uh, you know, the timetable, as far as I know, had never been set in stone, but it was always going to be, you know, probably sooner rather than later. So with the other changes going on over there, um, I think they just decided that this would be a good time to do it. You know, make they're making the transition with going to the Skag Factory team and with Randy Glady becoming more involved over there. Uh, let's just start everything fresh. And I think it's a positive on a lot of notes. I mean, one, you know, Daniel's personality and Daniel, we've talked about that. Um, you know, he certainly can drive the car. We've seen him do it. He's been on track, what, a dozen or 14 times or something like that over the years. And he certainly isn't going to have any issues there. But I think what may have been overlooked in this to a lot of people is with Tim being able to focus more singularly on making the car run better, and with Tim being able to stand on the starting line and watch and pick up so many things that you just simply can't get when you're sitting in the car, how much better is that going to make him? And I think that that's something that, you know, maybe a lot of people haven't talked about or haven't, but I expect the performance of that car, which was already pretty stout. I mean, won a couple of races last year and always in contention. But I think the performance of that car is now going to be even greater simply because if you only have one thing to concentrate on, you're going to be better at it than somebody who's splitting their their time and energies between two things or three things. And I think with Tim being able to put his singular focus 
on tuning on, on, you know, there's tuning, tuning is something that just absolutely overwhelms you. And if you have to turn that off from time to time to think about driving a car, cutting a light, doing your, then that's time that you're not thinking about how your next run, how you're going to improve for your next run. That Dickie Venables is thinking about that. Aaron Brooks is thinking about that. Jimmy Brock is thinking about that. Guido's thinking all of those guys that are their singular focus is how do I make my car quicker, better, faster, more consistent. And anytime you're not thinking about that, and they are, I think they've got a little bit of an advantage on you. And I think that this is going to make Tim even better than he already is. And he's, you know, pretty darn good as it is. We're really not losing Tim in the sport. We're gaining him as a crew chief. I can tell you that Tim has told me, um, you know, this has been the plan for a while. And things that I don't consider necessarily is that driving a funny car beats up your body, that it beats you up. It's a, it's a very challenging acceleration, deceleration process. It's on your spine. It's on your body. And, and, and Tim, you know, he's like been looking to, to do this at some point. And here we are, but we gained Tim Wilkerson, the crew chief on the starting line. We gained Daniel as the driver hopping out of the car. Um, and I also agree with what you're saying. We're seeing what I think is a, a slight progression in the change of the sport from this participation thing, like Joe and Alan want to get a funny car and go out there and race our funny car because we want to have a funny car and we want to go fast to professional motorsport where winning is a must. And you need your best possible driver, or best possible crew chief. Otherwise, you're not going to win. And if you're not winning, you're wasting your time and you're wasting the time of the people who are supporting you. Uh, whereas previously, it wasn't a waste of time to go out and have fun with our funny car. We're out there having fun with our funny car. Alan, this is great. We're out there in the NHRA and we're right. And you're seeing with Randy Glady from Skag buying this factory team, putting it out there. You got Joe Maynard, you know, Tony Schumacher was on with Brian Loans. Very significant interview that I think everybody should go listen to, right? Tony, you know, there's, I don't want to overstate the friction, but how could he not be highly motivated to go out there and get after it? All of these guys, like competition, not just going fast and being a part of it, competition and winning is now what's most important. And I think the Wilkerson team just made a big move to make that happen. Because, oh, by the way, everybody that told me says that Daniel is an ace. That Daniel has got what it takes to be a great funny car driver. As he needs is more laps. I, I would agree with that. And, you know, I hope that, you know, Tim certainly will be there to be able to coach Daniel and help him out should he need any kind of input or have any questions. I think that's that's a given. But I also hope that Daniel will coach Tim because Daniel should be the gold standard of how do you give a starting line interview? Yeah. <laughs> that's like, yeah. and um, the goat. that's that's <laughs> one thing I'm definitely going to miss. You know, we'll we'll be able to hear from him now at the top end of the racetrack after he gets out of the car, which will be a plus, but I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely going to miss him on the starting line. Now, I think, you know, there's, there's a lot going on out there right now. NHRA is in a good place. Um, you know, there are new people coming in. There's new money coming in. There's new motivation coming in. And uh, and I'm looking forward to, I'm, you know, looking forward to being a part of it over the course of the next few years, just, you know, continuing to watch the growth. And I think now, even though we both know that Justin Ashley is never going to get out of the car and talk smack, never going to do it, it's just not him. But everybody that knows anything or follows NHRA drag racing, like if you only follow one event a year, you're going to know that Justin Ashley versus Tony Schumacher means more, means more than any other matchup, maybe in top fuel right now. And I think that, um, you know, that, that story is going to be told and, you know, Tony's not going to personally make any, you know, take any swipes at Justin Ashley by any means. But if, if Tony goes out there and wins the first two or the first three or the first, if you don't think he's going to make a point of, hey, you know, maybe somebody made a bad choice. Maybe somebody, you know, Tony, you know that he's going to do that. And it just, I, I have contended for a million years. 
you need to have fans interested in the drivers and interested in the rivalries because as the years went by, you know, the number of times that Dean Scusa and Dale Worsham raced, there weren't, the whole grandstand wasn't emotionally involved in that. But if John Force and Al Hoffman raced, they damn sure were. If Whit Bazemore and Al Hoffman raced, or Whit Bazemore and John Force raced, they were all very interested in that. You know, the, the rivalries when we had, when we had the beer wars going on, when we had, you know, Tony Schumacher just kicking everybody's tail. When we had all of those things, the fans had a side. And I think if you are a fan of NHRA championship drag racing, you don't have to pick it today, but I think at some point you're either going to be team Justin or you're going to be team Tony. And you're going to look forward to those two cars going head to head on the racetrack at the end of the track. They're going to get out. They're going to shake each other's hand. There's no question about that, but I think it's going to mean more to the fans when they go up against each other, because now, you know, Justin is certainly looking to prove that he was worthy of the investment that's been made. And Tony is going to be out to show everybody that you might have made a mistake when you get up when you let my team get away. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, we got this great rivalry budding, and it has nothing to do with like you know DSR or JFR or Brittany or Steve Torrance or like another another thing is is popping. You've got these two new owners to NHRA drag racing. Joe Maynard, successful, uh, great guy wants to compete is out here. Randy Glady, the Skag power team. You remember the Castro super team, the Budweiser super sure. team, all those super teams back in the day has put together a team. Now Skag has got Jed Coughlin. Skag's got Daniel Wilkerson. Skag's got Justin Ashley, Dave Richards in the Versatran, which is under the same umbrella of Randy's company. Like this guy has invested a lot. Why? Cause he likes the feel of it. No, he wants to win. He wants to get after it. He wants to compete. He wants to, this is what our sport affords to these guys who are, you know, they've made it in the world and their businesses are doing well. And how can they challenge themselves? This is how you can challenge yourself. And he has gone into it um, with Skag leaving Tony Schumacher. What sponsors will he have? That Leatherwood distillery is going to be on the side of uh, Tony's car, at uh, the start of the season. And that is a distillery. They make bourbon uh, that uh, Joe Maynard purchased at the end of last year. And they had a big sponsor announcement. So that's going to be what's on the car at the start of the season. So uh, really interesting, just super exciting to think about all of these different potential angles. And, you know, we haven't mentioned Brittany Forrest. We haven't mentioned Doug Coletta. We haven't mentioned Steve Torrance, right? There's a lot, there's a lot going on with those guys and gals as well. Uh, oh, by the way, Tony Stewart in top fuel shaping up to be one of the best years ever already. And they're all going to be going after this, Alan. What do you think of the golden gator? I like it. I, I think, you know, there was a time a few years ago and you'll remember this when NHRA started, uh, doing some special prizes at some of the events, you know, we had, uh, special prizes, um, for the Atlanta event, special prizes for the for the Winter Nationals event. Uh, I think, you know, the, the Wally is obviously the most coveted trophy in drag racing, and that's not changing any. But for some of our marquee events, some of our big races, putting a little something extra out there, I think is awesome. And, you know, especially if it's something that you only have one chance a year to win. You know, I can tell you, I know that, you know, you follow NASCAR. I follow NASCAR. I have a lot of friends that make a living over there, pay a lot of attention to what they're doing. If you have a Martinsville clock, yeah. that's special because you only have one chance a year to win that. And so anytime we can do something like that to make a race extra special, I think it's a great thing to do. And I, you know, I hope it's not just a one-off. I would love to see that, you know, continue on and be something um, you know, for years and years to come, that if you win the Gator Nationals, not only do you win the Wally, but you get this that you can only get at the Gator Nationals. The Golden Gator. Well, you know, Erica makes a big deal of it. You know, the ice cream scoop from Norwalk, the Absolutely. wine goblet from example. Sonoma. It's it's not. There's a there's a a benefit and a curse to the Wally trophies all being the same, right? Like you get a stack of them and there's like a, you know, you got John Ford, you got 155 of them around you. It's this amazing visual uh, of, of these little gold men. The Wally is meaningful. NASCAR doesn't have the Wally. Every track has got its own trophy. Whereas every drag racer, including this guy is going to get a Wally. 
I got to get me a Wally, man. I got to try to get a Wally, even a divisional Wally. Got to try to get a Wally. But this is very. I, I can picture it now. Joe Costello racing for his first Wally. He's in the final against Bruno Massel. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not gonna stage, I'm not going to stage. You know, we're, both gonna get, we're both going to get booted, is what's going to happen. <laughs> All right. You're gonna have a All cop right. car. <laughs> I know. I know. It's it's exciting. It's exciting. Uh will just naturally have Phillips Connect as a primary sponsor. Dylan, he answered all of your questions in last week's show, which is in the archive. Like I'm sure you got another one. But yes, Phillips Connect is not gonna be a primary, they're gonna be a secondary sponsor. They're gonna be a uh along with Associate. the program. Yes, thank you very much. Um, but Skag is the primary sponsor of Justin's car. And the thing that was so cool to me for Justin, and we addressed it last week is I love seeing people go from spending their money to be there, taking a chance to what I call compensated professional athletes. Justin's in the car because he's so good at what he does. He's going to get paid to do it. That's what drag racing needs. Aaron Stanfield making that change from David and Joe Janik delivering money to elite motorsports to give this kid an opportunity because they think he's good to now he's getting a check to do the job because he's that good. And I really think that drag racing has to have the, uh, a, a combination of both. You, you know, you can still be the person who's stroking a check to be there. You can still be the person that pays to be out there all on your own, but you got to have like Ron caps style when he was at DSR paid athletes out there to make it a real sport in the eyes of other people. And, uh, and that's what Justin is now. Well, and Justin's gone about it, you know, the right way in the first place, you know, if anybody that knows Justin, his dad was always very highly motivated, right? He expect to win. We're here to win. We're going to end very positive attitude and very forward thinking. I think the Phillips connect is a perfect example. When they put together the deal with Phillips connect, if I'm not mistaken, it was three races or four races. Three races, and so start of the year. He actually mm -hmm. showed up with a semi wrapped, with the car wrapped, with it, and they came in with the attitude of they are giving us a chance. We are going to impress them to the point that they can't say no, and that's exactly what they did. If that doesn't work out, you've spent buckets of money putting together, in essence, a proposal because that's what they did. But they went out there, they impressed, they showed this is what we can do, this is what we can deliver, and this is why. You're going to want to expand the deal and extend the deal. And that's exactly what happened. You know, Kenny Bernstein, and this goes back a million years ago, but it's the exact same mentality. When Kenny Bernstein got an opportunity to have a 15 minute meeting with a Budweiser uh, marketing specialist, he drove the semi to St. Louis, unloaded the car in the parking lot, had the thing sitting there. When people were coming to work, like, come in the trailer, take a look at it. I want you to see my operation. I want you to show you what this, I'm here. Not, you know, he, he could have just showed up, right? Brought his little folder with him and said, hey, look, here's what I'm thinking to do. Here's it. But if you go all in on a deal like that, I really believe that your chances of success are higher. And that's exactly what they did. Believing that, you know, I've got something that's good enough. Somebody is going to want to pay me for it. I just have to go out there and prove it. So I'm going to go out there and prove it. And you invest in yourself. And then at some point, um, you know, I think that investment pays off. And I think that's what we're seeing. Yeah, the, the the hypothetical versus the actual, right? Like, well, we can do stuff. And it's like, no, we're doing it already. And you're missing yeah. the boat. Nobody wants to miss the boat. One more piece of news before I give you my hypothetical, right? The okay. hypothetical for Alan Reinhardt. Everybody's going to love what I'm going to ask Alan because you're going to love this because it's, I believe, to be pertinent. Okay. A uh, couple quick notes before I or do that. WFO gear on sale right now. You can have this shirt for 16 bucks. Go to WFORadio.com. I'll be tweeting out the link. It goes on sale every once in a while. Uh, you can get the fire t-shirt. Also, our Patreon. The what? The what? The what? The what? Fire! T-shirt. There you go. Thank you. There Sorry, you I did it wrong, right? Also, we're going to do our first Michael Heiner, hear it from Heiner Pro Stock Show for Patreons only today. And so if you want to join Patreon here in the month of January, if you sign up for a year, I will send you a T-shirt. Great stuff. All right. Dean Marinas. This is all part of the Tim Wilkerson story. Daniel is no longer Chad mm -hmm. Green's crew chief because he's now driving the Skag funny car. Dean Marinas. This guy, I call him a friend. He always, uh, you know, we talk 
and he's been learning and quietly observing. It makes me wonder how long has this been the plan, right? Has he really just been hanging out um, and getting involved? But now he's going to be crew chief of Chad Green's funny car. Chad had a great year last year. And now he's like, oh, man, is he in the lurch? Not really. Wilk, and they're still going to help him. But Dean has taken over. Dean, who is like a big nitrous guy, has tuned pro mod cars, thinks still has the quickest nitrous run to the eighth mile ever. Um, and now he's going to be tuning, you know, big show nitro funny car. I want to shout out to Dean Marinas. And yes, he's definitely coming on the show at some point to talk about it. But um, I'm excited. No, I think that's a good move. Um, you know, as you pointed out, he's been there for a while. You know, he has a relationship with Chad Green that goes back to Promot. So when Chad started doing this, he was coming over and hanging out. And I really believe that his initial thought was, you know, I, I don't know much about this. I think it's interesting stuff. I mean, you know, let's go kind of see how the other half lives. But he has gotten maybe not necessarily hands on, but more and more involved in devouring the data and looking at what the car does and, and, you know, observing what, when, when Daniel made this change to this, to this, well, here's what I'm seeing over here. What would be the correct way to fix that? I don't think that there's going to be much of a learning curve or much of a transition. They've also got some more help coming over with him. And as you mentioned, he certainly will have a liaison he can lean on if he needs it. But Dean is a smart guy and he is a detail guy, you know, running, I think running a nitrous car, uh, running a nitrous car without killing the engine, I believe is the toughest way to race in pro mod because with the restrictions that they have on the supercharger cars and on, and the boost restrictions that they have on the turbo truck cars, I mean, they're certainly not foolproof. If you want to go out and win races, you still got to get the job done. But I think running fast with a nitrous car and not damaging the engine is more difficult than running fast with one of the other combinations. And I'm sure that Steve Jackson will call me and tell me I'm an idiot any minute now, but, um, you know, the details that you have to be on top of and the things you have to be aware of and the minute changes that you have to not let slip through your fingers, that is going to play that kind of mentality and that kind of work ethic, I think is going to play good. And, you know, for the record, I know at least Steve's not going to bust me about the turbo cars because when a couple of times we uh, dabbled in pro mod school at the races and I said, okay, you know, hey, uh, Steve, you're unloading your blower car. What's the first thing you unload? He says, the toolbox. I said, you're unloading a nitrous car. What's the first thing you unload? He said, the spare parts. I said, you're unloading a turbo car. What's the first thing you unload? He said, the barbecue. Because it's a turbo car, you're just like, eh, put a blanket on it. It'll be fine in an hour. Uh, but anyway, I think I think that Dean's background and the fact that he is, as I said, he's a very smart guy. And he is so detail-oriented. And that's what you have to be to be successful in the nitro ranks. You know, Austin Coyle used to say, it's never nothing. If his car did something and he didn't understand why, it drove him crazy. And if he would ask somebody, you know, well, what happened to the clutch? Oh, it was nothing. It can't be. We have to figure out what it is because if we can't figure out exactly what, what happened, then we won't be able to either prevent it or to repeat it. And I think Dean has that same kind of mentality. I want to know every detail, everything, every so that I can either prevent what went, what happened that I didn't want or I can repeat what happened that I did. I don't think there's going to be, uh, I don't think there's going to be much fall off or much transition there. I think that uh, Chad's still going to be good. He's going to be a great uh, starting line interview as well. Like those guys got swagger. It's, it's a, a wave is happening. A sea change is happening. All right. You ready for the hypothetical? Okay. Okay. I'm ready. Alan Reinhardt. I have sat next to the aforementioned Austin Coyle. And we chit chatted a little bit. We're not friends by any means, like, but I know that you guys are close and I know many people are close in it. Like I look at the man, um, you know, like a deity a bit like, right. Like, wow, this guy is a God of drag racing. He's on the Mount Rushmore of drag racing tuners. He's as, uh, as great as it gets. And he said to me that he thinks if you were given the opportunity that you could tune one of the cars, get it down the racetrack and, you know, figure it out based on your knowledge, which I thought was great, which is why I get to ask you this. And also because you're here, if you were a nitro crew chief in top fuel or funny car, and you were faced with a situation where you had the opportunity, like you, you have your standard rules situation, but you are faced with a situation where all of a sudden 
you could probably get away with cheating somehow. How would you do it? Like what, what, what area of the car? And I'm not advocating cheating here, folks, but I'm just wondering, like, what area of the car? Because these machines are so finely tuned in such a tight box. What is the thing that you could do that wouldn't throw off the entire tune up? Is it nitro percentage instead of, you know, bump it up a couple? Is it mags? Is it like, what is the thing that you could alter relatively easily? I'm not worried about getting caught. That's not what I'm worried about. Like, what could you change? Like, all right, no rules this run. Go as fast as you can. What are the things that can be changed that won't throw everything else off and ruin your setup? Traction control. Traction control. Does that even exist? Like for a top fuel car, traction control? How? The technology exists. Um, and if if you were going to throw the rules away now, I want to like two things right off the bat. Austin has said he thinks that if you gave me a nitro car, I could qualify it. He has also said, I'm not saying you can win a race. I think you could qualify. I don't know if that's true or not. It would depend on how many cars are there and where the bumps are. But it, it's very touching to me that he thinks that highly of me. But I am also, I am a student of the game. I love to watch, to learn, um, you know, when things happen that I don't recognize for the tower, from the tower, I go down and find out, you know, what was that? Because if I see it again sometime, I want to know. I want to be able to identify what happened. So anyway, um, the second thing is I don't have a cheater's mentality when it comes to racing. I really don't. If you told me, hey, you can win a championship, here's how you could do it. You're going to have to cheat, but don't worry, nobody will catch you. I just, I'm not interested in the least. No, I have no desire. If I can't win the thing, you know, up and up, I, I really, really have no desire to do that. But, yeah, but that's not what we're me, talking. I, we're burnishing we're your having credibility. A, if, if you told me we're having a no rules this weekend race, bring whatever yes. you can bring to the racetrack and try yes. to get away with it, I yes. would try to implement traction control on a nitro car. Prior, before you would increase the nitro percentage, before yeah. you would uh, try to increase the spark, before, um, you know, like like what 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 else well, is there? Well, you can you can make plenty of power. Okay, I mean. If you wanted to bump the nitro percentage one or two percent, you know, you could get there by bumping the, the compression a little bit or by bumping the rest of it. Uh, if you're talking about like a mechanical change with the things we have right now that are being used, yes. I would think I would think that the easiest thing to do would be to hop up the magnetos because dropping cylinders probably costs more races over the course of the year than you know, probably any other one thing. And if you could make the spark hotter, that would just give you a little bit extra insurance policy against dropping cylinders. So uh, if you're talking about, you know, what would you do with the parts that are on the car right now? Um, I would uh, juice up the magnetos or, um, you know, try to develop a, something bigger than the 44. Okay. What about, um, you remember the swept back headers era, yeah. those, those headers. Uh, is that something that you can just, bolt on and make an adjustment and, you know, compensate for, or do you think there's a formula to that? Have they gotten rid of all of those headers or those headers? Do you think there's like still in shop somewhere? No, they haven't gotten rid of them. Um, and not because somebody's thinking I'm going to use them again someday. It's because they're perfect on your show car. Um, the, the teams that have show car programs or have show cars or have one that they want to put on display in the mall or one that, you know, you want to give to a sponsor so they can put it in their office. I've got to have parts on them. And I literally have seen teams going out and buying parts from other teams because they needed a set of valve covers to put on show car. They just didn't have it. So those headers, you know, they certainly weren't throwing the scrap heap. They're going to be out there someplace. Um, you know, if you bolted those headers on, I, I'd have to ask, but my initial thought would be the only thing that you would have to do uh, is maybe change the weight balance of the car a little bit. I think you might, you know, move 10 pounds from the back to the front, um, something like that, because you're giving up a little bit of the downforce on the front. So you might do a little weight balance thing on the car. But uh, it was, was that what you were going for? You put the sweat back headers on? 
Well, I, I don't know. So this con why does this come up, right? Like if at the engine performance expo, we're having some great conversations. I met a lot of people there and like what, what is available to, to do? Like, how could you even like what, what is available? That's not so tightly wrapped in your combination that you finally tuned for years to make a quick and abrupt change to gain performance on a top fuel dragster or nitro funny car that runs 3.6 or 3.8 seconds. Like what could even be done? And so that's where the conversation came from. Um, and you know, my thought was that, it, that that's too difficult to just switch from one day to the next. Like you can't just deviate from, months of testing and refinement to get to where they are right now to do something for a day like that. I didn't, Actually, I didn't you know what's possible. Can I, can I change my answer? Yeah. Because I can't believe I didn't think of this before. What? I what just, I, I have just found the answer that's going to win me this no rules race. Yes. Just disconnect the rev limiter. Ah, That's um, but isn't that baked into the cake as we are right now? The rev limiter, like, yeah, but it could be, it could be overridden. Okay, all right. But yeah, if there, if, because then you know your your tune up wouldn't start falling over. You know, whatever they're coming on now, two point six seconds or two point seven seconds. So, um, yeah, if if there was a, there are no rules to make a couple of runs. What do you want to do with your car? I would uh, I would shut off the rev limiter. Okay. Shut off the rev limiter. And it's not just a matter of you flip a switch, shut it off. You'd have to I, – I'm not 100% sure what it would entail, whether you could get a different uh, MSD box or whatever you would need. But, you know, the part, the part that is required to be run on a nitro car has the rev limiter built in, yes. But, um, you know, they are, um, I believe, programmable because if NHRA makes a change – Everybody just doesn't throw away, you know, a half a million dollars worth of ignition equipment. They just go reprogram it. So, yeah. Now, now that I, now that I think about it, that'd be the easiest thing to do. Well, there, and that's what I'm wondering. That won't ruin everything else that you've worked on to stay yeah. within the rules. All right, excellent work on the hypothetical. And uh, you know, people are at, you know, like, why are you, why are you talking about this? It's because it, it came up while we were at having a conversation at the Engine Performance Expo, which was a great. Uh, collection of people from all generations of racing when that window of opportunity was much more open than it is right now. And so uh, I felt like it was a good uh, talk. All right, before we part ways, uh, another engine performance expo and all that guys that's on YouTube, you can go watch it all. Uh, they did a great job of featuring the project Pontiac and all, but what I noticed and continue to notice, you know, everyone knows that uh, Sam Tech.edu and Brian Massengill and the Massengill family have been longtime supporters of WFO Radio, and we support them for what they're doing. The trade that is the machinist, that person, um, they're getting older and older, and they're not becoming less and less uh, necessary. Like, we have to have the person. If they're not making the parts, they're making the machines that make the parts. And watching uh, Dave Bullock work on my engine, knowing that like I've got this one block, and if we just drill a hole sideways through it, I'm out of business. It 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 was an intense uh, it was an intense feeling and nerves going back checking on it was really fun, but seeing the precise way that he handled his business, you know Gary Stinnett does it, all these guys do it, but we need like our country, like our industry, the racers, all of it. We need another wave of young people to get into this stuff. Otherwise, we're going to be in big trouble. How do you think we do it? Um, I think that you need to reach out um, early. I don't think you're going to find a whole lot of people that are 30 years old that decide, OK, that's something I want to do. Uh, but I think like one of the reasons that the NHRA's Youth and Education Services program uh, is as successful as it is, because we get an opportunity to talk to young people, uh, mostly still in high school, junior high school, sometimes into trades. But I think if you get, you know, 
I have compared to compared to the way that the machine shops are right now, I have a blacksmith shop. Okay. There's not a computer in here. I've got, you know, manual lathe, manual mills, manual, manual, manual. And for what I do, it works perfectly. But the number of times when I've had a young person come in here and they're like, well, what is, what do you do with that? Well, let me show you. You know, grab a piece of aluminum, put something in, and go, okay, here, watch it. Dit, 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 dit. And it's you see the the fascination, right? I think that is the way to do it. I think you need to get somebody involved, interested at a young age. And then, you know, how can I go forward? And the a, a lot of it really has really has changed because you know, I have a I have a full service automotive shop that uh, I share my industrial space with. And we had the conversation, it's probably been a year ago now, about when's the last time you rebuilt an engine? Because what he does is OEM stuff, right? And then somebody knocks an oil pan off a thing or whatever. What do you do? Well, you go find a used engine. You find a used engine out of a recycling yard. And that's just what you do these days. You know, I couldn't tell you, you know, he's been in business 36 years. And he says, you know, I don't believe for the last 10 years, you know, he hasn't pulled a V6 out of a Toyota since the machine shop to be rebuilt. You know, you pull it out and you... Yeah, because you know what we used to do with the small block Chevys and what we used to, you know, that just there just isn't much of that anymore. So the industry has changed, um, but there are still people needed out there, and I think that that makes it even more specialized. Um, I was talking to a, a gentleman last weekend who I probably shouldn't mention his name, but his initials are WJ, and I said, "Are you working on anything fun right now?" Because I ran across something that I had never seen before. And so I called him and I said, hey, just curious, have you ever run across this before? And he was working on, um, do, he's doing some Ferrari stuff. And I went, what? And he said, I got a guy called me and said, hey, I got this, I got this. I can't find anybody that can work on it. Can you do it for me? He said, send it to me. Let me take a look at it. And so that's something he's going to do. I don't know how many people know this, probably nobody. Warren Johnson has a program where they see and see uh, Lamborghini heads. And if you've got a hot rod Lamborghini anywhere in the world, pretty good bet that Warren Johnson did your cylinder heads, whether you know it or not. He will have the company that does the engines for those things will send him like, you know, six sets or eight sets or 10 sets of cylinder heads. And he'll see and see the things and send them back. But anyway, um, there is still something out there, but it's become more specialized. And I th would hope that that would make it more appealing because, you know, to, to be the person that bores and homes, uh, 350 Chevy because it's got to go back in, you know, a, a C60 probably wasn't going to be as appealing to tell somebody, hey, look, you know, you're going to be working on racing stuff. You're going to be working on really critical stuff. You're going to be working on, I mean, that's the kind of stuff. Um, you know, I think that if, if you could, if you could get in front of young people and say, would you like to be involved in building this? These are the steps that you take to get there. And, you know, and that's, that, and again, one of the things with the yes program, you know, the, that is, that is a big talking point uh, for Bob Tasca in particular um, and for the Gerber collision folks in particular is the earnings potential. The earnings potential right now is ridiculous. You know, my 67 Mustang, I can fix about anything on it. This car, I can fix about anything on it. My everyday car, I can't fix anything on nothing. Right. And, you know, when you take it to the shop and the shop rates $144 an hour. Okay. Um, but, you know, to to have the training and have the expertise to do that, I think is, uh, you know, I think that is a selling point. But you've got to, I think you've got to want to start doing it pretty early. I really don't think that there's going to be a whole lot of people that are 30 or 35 or 40 to go, okay, hey, I want to, I want to embark on this. And this is where I got to start. I'm going to start. Yeah, it's so Bobby Graham, one of our great listeners uh, on the Ignition Show. He's a Patreon. He's on the Ignition Show. You know, he he was doing a you know clear out of his barn. He's selling stuff, and a and a kid like eleven years old from the neighborhood came by and wanted to buy a bunch of go kart stuff. And and he's like, "Hey, man, bring your dad back, right? Like, I don't want to sell you a go kart without your your parents knowing about it." So the parents come by, and and they're like, "No, man, he takes apart everything, and he loves to see how it all works." There you go. That's him. <laughs> we yep, gotta him. we gotta identify the kids like the people on hidden horsepower, the podcast we do for total seal. I ask everybody, how'd you get into this? And they all start with that story. I had to know how things worked. And so I took my mom's vacuum cleaner apart, right? Like, there you go. There's the machinist and you got to You got to get him. 
And um, it's something that I think we need to put a like a, a red flag on. We got to do this because we need to fill these machinists are getting older. They're aging out and they want to to give away their knowledge. Once upon a time, nobody would give away anything. Now they want to give away their knowledge. All right. Before we let you go, you mentioned you talked to Warren. Everyone was saying yes. at the Eng Engine Performance Expo that Warren and Kirk. I, I actually never I never mentioned his name. Just to be he, clear. He said initials. All right. That's a good point. Hypothetically, another hypothetical. People were you, saying you, you may have cracked, you may have cracked the code, but I didn't say that. I'm a pretty smart <laughs> cookie, mine heart. You yeah. gotta tell me. Okay. People were saying at the engine performance expo, you know, Kurt Johnson uh texted in when we and we had one internet crash, and he's like, Hey, you're off the air. But that those guys are making power with their 500 cubic inch fuel injected pro stock engine. What do you know? What can you share? Uh, I don't know anything. I mean, I you know haven't seen a dyno sheet, haven't seen, and it really wouldn't make any difference anyway. Um, but I would love, love, love for them to put one on the racetrack. And I think what it would take is just as somebody to call them, one of the independent teams or something, and call them and see you know work something out to get the thing on the racetrack because that is something that was such a big part of Warren's life for so many years, ever since they changed the rule in what was it eighty two, um, that he's still. When he's got downtime, which there isn't a lot of, but he's in the shop every darn day. We did speak again on Christmas, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but um, that he goes and kind of dabbles around with the 500 inch pro stock stuff. So, uh, yeah, he has told me that uh, they're significantly better than they were with carburetors. And I'd love to see uh, I'd love to see it go down the racetrack. So maybe uh, maybe somebody can call, make a deal, put something together and uh, and get an engine out there for, you know, I don't know, a couple of races or six races or a season. And um, I think it, I think it'd be great to see. I, yes. The highlight of was when the thing that I called Warren about, because I ran across something in Miami that really had me scratching my head. And so I thought, okay, who's been around a long time and, and made a couple of calls. One of the, one of the people I called was, um, you know, the aforementioned, I think I just mentioned his name. So anyway, and he <laughs> said, too late. you slipped, we caught you. Yeah, it's Warren Johnson. He He's said, he had never heard of this, didn't know anything about it, was not aware of it. Now, it's not like Warren was building hemis back in the day, but he's been around the engine game long enough. I thought he would have stumbled across it. Uh, whereas on the other side of the coin, when Ray Barton called me back, he said, oh, yeah, we did that for 25 years. That was, used to be standard procedure. He said, we've moved on past that now. But this engine I'm working on, I believe, was bolted together last in the 1970s. So, uh, But he said, oh, yeah, that's standard procedure. We did that forever. And I was like... Wow. Um, something you might be interested in. I don't expect you to watch the whole, uh, you know, 16 hours of engine performance expo, but right at the very start of it, um, was it day one? It might've been, uh, Darren Morgan, uh, works at Bischoff, but was, uh, you know, head airflow guy at Rayer and Morrison for years. Oh, Did I know. I know Darren. Darren, 25 minute PowerPoint on what they do with the Dodge Hemi challenge cylinder heads. Like, you know, how they, they called them, he called them Hemi hand grenades and all the different things that they move within the cylinder head to retain the CC number that they have, mm -hmm. but all the different stuff. And he's showing cross sections and everything. I think you might uh, find that very interesting. Alan, great job. Any final thoughts for the audience out there? No, other than I am definitely going to look that up because I, uh, I am interested in that. I'd like to take a look at it. But uh, no, I'm uh, looking forward to We We got to go racing. We got to go racing. We got to go racing. I went. I actually went out to Tucson Dragway this week. Um, they had their uh, they had a double um, team race out there this weekend. I went out and, and spent a little time out there. And uh, we got to pick up a microphone for the first official time anyway this year and, and get to go out and hang out with the bracket race. But, you know, what Jim Hughes has done with the place out there in the program is top notch and support your local racetrack. We need to keep the ones we've got. So it was good to get out there and, and help out. Word. All right, Alan, great job. We'll talk to you next week. And uh, we're getting closer. You know, we're, we're sneaking up on it. Still a few weeks to go till some sort of uh, racing. Orlando Speed World uh, Dragway is going to be going to the first divisional race of uh, 2024. I'm headed to Kansas this week for the D5 Awards Ceremony. You'll see our D5 folks out there. Going to be very uh, fun and exciting. And we just uh, keep, you know, clicking off these winter days till we can go racing. Thank you so much. It won't be long. Good luck with your comp car. Um, you know, Joe needs a set of big chief heads. Uh, wait, just one thing real quick. You were talking about who was the guy that honed your block? Dave Bullock. 
he worked at okay. Roush Yates and he, you know, way back in the day when I mentioned it, uh, you know, Ilmore. And he goes, well, that was way back. And it's like, look, but right now he's working at Sandy Wilkins racing engines, running the F69 Rottler for Sandy as he tries to dig out from thousands of customers. And did you tell him, oh, we're only looking to make 700 horsepower. He would have gone, do it yourself. He doesn't even know no, how I to own for 700 horsepower. I know that, right? No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know not to. Say, I know what to say and not to say, Reinhardt, and when to say it. Don't tell the high performance guys we're only trying to do anything. Are you kidding? Yeah, he, he would have quit. He would have quit on the second step. You're only trying to make what? Oh yeah, it'll be fine. Everybody needs to know, just like with Alan Steele, this was going to be a ring and hone project. <laughs> Everything was going to be just put right back together with some new total seal rings to showcase their new fancy technology. But then the block was all cracked. And with that was the fork in the road. What do we do? Do I go get another junkyard block Reinhardt and put everything together the exact same way it was in 1996? No, no. And then thus uh, project Pontiac is born. Follow along on our social media. Hashtag project Pontiac. How many pieces from the flywheel of the water pump? from the oil pan to the carburetor yeah. how many pieces of the old engine are going to be repurposed for the new one that's a good question okay the oil pan one okay the timing cover two temporary before you get done <laughs> the valve covers initially don't need to belt uh, drive for a pontiac Oh my gosh. No, the valve covers won't work because they won't fit the big chief heads. So go on. Oh gosh. Um, let's see. The well, the Pontiac has a valley cover tray, which is uh that that will be back on there. Okay. And uh that's hey, pretty need, much it. Do you need something to shoot for? What do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, in racing, right? It's always important to have a goal, to have a milestone, to have a record. You do you need something to shoot for? Do you want to give me something to shoot for? I'll I'll consider it. If I'm not mistaken, Kevin Kleinweber went 1090 at 177. Okay, not happening, man. The car weighs 3,300 pounds. This is a heavy car. St well, you have to be it. heavy to run Super Street. Yes, 2,800 pounds. You're right. You're right. You're right. It's very exciting. I think I'll, I'll, shoot, I'll shoot Kevin a note, but I think I think he went 176 or 177 miles not an hour. Not going 176 miles an hour. C5 Pete says, I bet the oil pan gets changed. It's a Mylodon pan. It's not like a stock pan or anything, but uh, we'll, uh, we shall see. We shall see. All right. I Is appreciate the iron aluminum? It's an iron block. It's an iron block. See? Oh, okay. Right yeah. there. It's not an aluminum block. Those very expensive. Like, who you, you know? You know? Yeah. I don't have that kind of cash. Aluminum block sitting around. Okay. Well, if it's aluminum block, I was going to tell you that you had to put an aluminum pan on it. But if it's an iron block, you can put a steel pan on it. Iron block. That's that's okay. right. All right. Good job. Thank you, Alan. Let's see you next week. Oh, boy. There he goes. Can't wait. There he goes. The voice of the NHRA. Alan Reinhardt joins us each week right here on WFO Radio. Look at all those people out there checking out WFO Radio. Thank you so much. We do this show a couple of times a week, every week. And this live version that you're watching is only part of it. Most people are listening to our podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. And if you're going to go download the podcast, please write us a review. We talk NHRA drag racing. We speak with champion drivers. We're going to try to catch up with all the champions. Later this week, Daniel Wilkerson and maybe Tim are going to join us on Thursday, 12 noon Eastern time. Had Justin Ashley last week. All kinds of great information coming out of those interviews in our feed. Remember, the WFO mobile app is going to sunset. So if that's how you get your WFO, you must resubscribe somewhere else. And frankly, the YouTube channel. I will be doing more videos of Project Pontiac. That's going to be your Project Pontiac Central, our YouTube channel channel we got our big flying h motorsports park video that got like thirty-seven thousand views that showed me wow short form videos are really popular maybe i should do some more and i will uh wfo radio tv on youtube and we've got some very exciting things coming up in the very near future uh an expansion of where you're going to be able to get wfo radio the patreons patreon.com slash wfo radio what is this it's a group of listeners who by choice 
spend a monthly to get backstage access to WFO radio. What do they get? Well, they get the hear it from Heiner pro stock show specifically for Patreons. We're doing our first one later today, four o'clock first one of 2024. You get Monday motivation. I jump on each week and set the table for you. You get stickers, you get a patch. And if you sign up for a year right now, I will send you a WFO radio team shirt our WFO radio logo shirts that are, are for pay for Patreons. The patreon.com slash WFO radio. You can get there from our website and we're closing in on a hundred. That's a number. Like, is that a lot? Is it a little don't care what the assessment is. I care that there's almost a hundred people that are supporting the WFO radio universe. And they also get to participate and sometimes co-host our ignition podcast guys, your final thoughts in the comment section right now. I want to hear what you have to say about what we just talked about. I'm going to run through the comments, but before I do that, I got to shout out to the people who genuinely make it possible for me to go WFO. These people who have been with the show for a long time, like Frank Hawley's drag racing school. Here's something for you to do in 2024. Drive a dragster. It's a half day experience. You make three runs down the track, a half track and two full track passes. You strapped in big block Chevy behind you. They can even set up a race. It will change your perspective of drag racing, having sat in the seat. But it's really a thrill ride. You know, he uh, Frank told me, you know, these people, they like to go bungee jumping. That's not cool. Driving a dragster is cool. And everybody that's done it, they've loved it. Because, you know, when I ask people to do something, I ask, solicit feedback. Was it cool? As I'm saying. And they said, absolutely, it was. FrankHawley.com. Tell them you heard about it on WFO Radio. Of course, there's Marvin Rodak. RodaksCoffeeAndGrills.com. 817-924-6821. This is the best coffee from around the world. The best coffee from around the world. Small farms that have got deals with Marvin. And the one that I'm drinking right now that's giving me all this like uh, creativity and energy is the Stampede of Speed blend that he put together for last year's Stampede of Speed. 817-924-6821. Everybody loves it. Call Marvin. Hot sauces, spice rubs, tools, tips, information, recipes, grills, outdoor kitchens. You can get anything through Marvin Rodak. Rodakscoffeeandgrills.com. He's located in Fort Worth, Texas. So if you're down there, check it out. Sam Tech, the School of Automotive Machinists and Technology. This, I'm calling the machinist shortage a couple of years in advance. We need to address this. If you know a young person, I'm not saying you got to go to Samtech. They're a great option. But if you know a young person that for whatever reason that they can't explain has to take something apart and figure out why it works, there is your future machinist. You might want to help direct them down the road. And uh, Randy Neal from CWT Industries said it a bunch of times at the Engine Performance Expo. We are willing to give you our information now. It's not like it was once upon a time where everybody was fighting for their last meal and uh, they were you know, willing to let everybody blow up their stuff. Now these gentlemen who have put their life into gaining this knowledge realize that there's not a lot of people behind them that are there to take the knowledge and they're eager to share the knowledge. So let's cultivate future machinists. And one of the places that is doing a great job of that is Sam Tech. Dot edu. Call Brian Massengill, call him directly, tell him you heard about it on WFO radio. If you're interested in the Patreons, patreon.com slash WFO radio. Then of course, Bernie's Speed Shop, the Fan Fest, Wednesday before the Gator Nationals. They'll be going after the Golden Gator. Maybe a Golden Gator will make an appearance at the Fan Fest. Who knows? Bernie's.com, follow their social. Fog it. These are piston rings that were not sprayed with fog it. You see the rust on them? That's what fog it is designed to prevent. How else would you stop that? At the end of each race, you spray down the carburetor, you spray into the, uh, the spark plug holes, you coat the inside of the cylinders, you protect your investment, but it also works in a machine shop. It's a great supplicant lubricant. People are using it everywhere. And um, that's not anecdotal. I saw it this past weekend. Speaking of CWT industries, if it rotates, you can balance it. Turbochargers, superchargers. If it rotates, you can balance it. CWT makes balancing machines for the giant 3500 Caterpillar diesel engine that's working you know, in mining. 
They balance everything. But of course, we're high performance guys. So if you've got a machine shop, and you've got an old balancer, you want to step up, you're wondering, why should I step up? Think of all the things that I've told you about Total Seal. Think of all the things that we've told you about all these other uh, high-performance companies. The game has changed. You can do it better in much less time in a much more easy way running these machines. CWT Industries, tell them you heard about it on WFORadio.com. FTI Performance Transmissions and Torque Converters. The land, Florida. What I love the best about FTI, and you know, now they got FTIparts.com as well. Follow their social for updates. So you can get all the parts that goes in these FTI transmissions delivered to you and assemble it yourself if you like. A lot of people know how to put together a power glide, but you want these parts. Well, now they're available. But the thing that I was so impressed about when I went to FTI was the people that work there. It's not the parts, it's not the machines, it's always the people. They care. They're motivated. They've got a great uh, work ethic. They understand that the people that are buying their parts and pieces want performance, and some of them are trying to win championships. So the next time you need parts and pieces for your transmission or you need a full transmission or torque converter, FTIPerformance.com. Thanks to Paul Lee for stepping up once again in 2024. Of course, Phillips-Connect.com, smart trailer technology. For those of you in the transportation industry moving over the road, we had a gentleman who worked at a tire and rubber company, you know, they, they fit tires for fleets. And he's like, I think Phillips Connect would be good for our customers. I put them together with the folks at Phillips Connect. So if you want to email me, joe at wforadio.com, I can give you that personalized introduction. And then finally, Total Seal Piston Rings, the leader in ring seal technology. Got a lot of great stuff coming from the PRI trade show in the Hidden Horsepower podcast feed. But what's the point? It's all an exercise in understanding how vital ring seal is. The machine you use, the hone surface that you put, and the ring all together work as a system to create ring seal. And if you're using the same stuff that always worked back in the day and you haven't updated, you haven't thought about it, there's so much that can be gained in this area. Totalseal.com. Tell them you heard about it on WFO Radio. Speaking of factories that I have been to and toured, that's one of them. All right. Let's see what you guys have got to say today. Like, this is the final. This is one of my favorite parts of the show. Seeing what everybody has to say as we, uh, you know, as we work along. All right. Here we go. Steven, the manpower Vega. He was running Super Street at close to 170. Yeah, right around 2,800 pounds. And, you know, the big block Chevrolet is very different than a Pontiac. This is going to be single four barrel, naturally aspirated. Um, I'm telling you. The goal is to make a little over 700 horsepower. We're not going that big. We're not going that crazy. Jim Essex had fun. Great show, AJ. What's up, AJ? You get the trailer back yet from Lakeland? I spoke with Mike Scott this morning. Text with him. But, you know, if you text with someone, that counts as spoke. And the trailer has a service number, and it's about to go into service, and they're going to go through the whole thing. And I'm very excited that Right Trailers has my trailer because that is pretty vital. And I'm also getting, you know, motivated so no they they have it uh megan says patreon is where it's at says megan says patreon is what's up it's a community it's like the backstage pass the vip pass to the wfo universe you know if you're not looking for a bunch of friends to share drag racing talk with on and off the air it might not be for you because that's what's happened with the patreons they all are they're hanging out they're meeting up even when i'm not around Great show. Lots of exciting news coming for the 2024 season. Scott agrees. Mark Sellerwood, who came with us last year to the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame with Big Daddy Don Garlitz. He won the tickets to our table. We're not going to have a table this year. And they're not inducting John Force. But Mark was a part of it. As usual, great listening to you two. Aaron, Austin Proc can 100% handle it. Well, uh, pff, what's the word? It's duh. Austin Proc. So the dragster, some people didn't understand. They didn't get that news that the Montana brand dragster is parked for the moment. We haven't seen a big announcement about that because typically people don't make big PR announcements about negative news. But that's why Austin is available to drive Robert's funny car. But this is John Force Racing. I wouldn't be surprised if they are able to put together a deal that puts Austin back out on the racetrack. And if you're a big corporate type, looking for a great opportunity. There's not too many better than Austin Proc out there. Facebook user 
says, great show. Thanks for distracting me while I work on reports at work. Looking forward to you racing in Super Street. Uh, oh, this is uh, Gareth uh, Senkow is who it is. 900 reports. Stop it, guys. You're, you're, you're setting the bar too high, man. You're, you're going to really, I'm going to come out and it's going to make like 780 and I'm going to be super happy. And you guys are going to be like, oh, it's not making 900. Fail. Not a fail. I want to build a consistent, reliable engine with which to run Super Street and be successful. That's it. JP, what's up, JP? Ready to go racing. Yeah, I'm ready to go racing, but not really. I got a lot of work to do in the studio. Jim Parks, late because I was clearing snow. Great attention to the pits release today. I haven't seen it. I don't know what it is. Our attention in the pits. We work so hard to make sure you've got attention in the pits to watch throughout the winter break. All I can ask you is please share them. A lot of people, they like it. They don't share it. These cars are amazing. The people are amazing. NHR has got their subscribers. Of course, I amplify them all the time, but we can only do so much. The viral nature of all of you sharing these people and their amazing cars. Please do it for them, not for me. Can't, I don't even know what was released today. Parks, no idea. Monica, lots of exciting news for the 2024 racing season. Looking forward to it. Randy, really enjoyed today's show. Thank you, Randy. We're back each Tuesday with Alan Reinhardt at 1 o'clock Eastern time. We've got an entire archive. You can listen audio only to the podcast feed. Go back as far as you want or watch on YouTube, WFO Radio TV. Closing in on 3,000 subscribers. Wasn't that long ago? We had 600. The long form show. It's a different kind of animal. So uh, sign on. Dino, good job. I love you. I love you too, Dino. Thank you. Fontana Carding. WFO, nice show today. Scott Malpass says, great show today. Larry Anderson says, always a great way to spend 90 minutes on a Tuesday. That's right, right in the middle of the day. A lot of people always ask me, why don't you do the show at night? Right in the middle of the day, because it's work for working people. I know you're out there, you corporate time-stealing weasels. I'm going to give you a little something to listen to. And uh, not everybody watches live, guys. Not everybody watches live. Maybe some WFO interviews with some of the EPE stars. Great show today. Thanks, says Jeff Bond. But then what's the point of going to the EPE? Darren Morgan has agreed to come on WFO. Talk to Darren already. The conversation that he and I had about airflow and the fact it's the little stuff. Mike, Mike Valerio was there at the beginning of Pro Stock. I asked him, what did you think when Grumpy Jenkins showed up with the tube chassis car? And it was like picking a scab off. You know, you could see it. That's where Pro Stock changed. And then he told me how he fell in a vat of acid. Amazing. He just helped Mark Powick win his first factory showdown race last year. Think of that. He was there for the first pro stock race, and he was there to help Powick win his first flex jet factory stock showdown race out there in St. Louis at Worldwide Technology Raceway. What kind of a career is that? That's insanity. And the guy fell into a vat of acid because he was one of the first people to acid dip cars. Think about that. That's who was at Engine Performance Expo. Darren Morgan. The moment he realized he was sitting at Lee Shepard's desk and what that meant to him. Think about that. We have too much going on in the sport to focus on any one story. That's what WFO is for and all of the others. Everybody's doing a great job. Everybody needs to keep doing a great job, putting out their shows, focusing on whatever it is that they can focus on because our sport just the different variety of cars and classes. Uh, it's too much. It's a miracle that we tell any of the stories. But that was amazing to me when he told me about that because I was a fan of Lee. Like as a little kid, I, you know, I, why did I like Lee Shepard? I don't know. I was six. No, I was 10. Selena, what's up, Selena? Great show, fellas. See you both at the Gators. Yeah, I will be there. C5 Pete. Jeff, I've got to believe that Joe will add uh, some of the guys to the Hidden Horsepower feed. Yes, that is true. Yeah, well, if you're not subscribed to Hidden Horsepower, you're definitely missing out. we got some good stuff coming up. Uh, what do you do to step up and win the big money race coming up in Florida? Well, what's interesting about this Skag Pro Superstar shootout is that it, con it comes at the conclusion of several days of testing. So they're going to be serving two masters. One 
they're going to be trying to get geared up for the start of the NHRA Mission Foods Drag Racing Series. Because as big a deal as this pro race is, the the season is their job, right? Like this race is not going to pay for everyone's salary for an entire year. So you want to be good for the season. So you're working on stuff. But at the same time, $250,000. You want to get that. That's a big bonus right at the start of the season. So I'm, I'm sure they're going to be kind of working in two boxes. What's going to win us that race and what's going to make us good for the long term. Um, and the teams are going to have to manage that. And I think that's uh, it's a very interesting storyline. And, you know, a lot of people are in the feed wondering about my question to Reinhardt. It genuinely came up in the uh, Engine Performance Expo. But tech is a big thing. Tech is a big thing. And um, I have no doubt that they will have a strong technical inspection presence. The Don Garlis Museum of Drag Racing is out there looking forward to the start of the 2024 season, seeing everyone at the Gators. And uh, I am guessing that there are tables still available for the International Drag Racing uh, Hall of Fame, which I will be hosting. Already have announced the inductees this year. It's going to be amazing. If you have never been since we're blocking out like two weeks in Florida and you're going to Bernie's on Wednesday, you might as well call Chuck at the museum, tell them you heard about it on WFO and get your ticket for the hall of fame and spend that Thursday with us. It's awesome. Everybody loves it. We have a great time and it's going to be another great year. See if I can see you next week. Of course, Lonnie, great show. Can you answer my when waiting to happen next question? Mm, yeah. Uh, we'll do that next week. I think there's uh, quite a few. Uh, I think Joe needs to call up Proline and get a 3,000 horsepower engine in Project Pontiac. You're not the only person to say that. Everybody shouts out Proline. It's true. Remember, Thursday, Daniel Wilkerson, guys. Daniel Wilkerson and maybe Tim. Dream big, Joe. I am dreaming big. Being at a racetrack with my own car and seeing the look on my dad's face. At the start of day one of the Engine Performance Expo, we pay, played a YouTube video that was created in 1992 of me and my dad going racing together along with Jeremy Preston and Roger Preston, two great friends from back in the day when we raced, they followed us around. It was reality TV in 1992 for a segment on local access, you know, Wayne's world style TV. And they did a great job with it in car. I'm this, uh, you know, not that I'm not an awkward middle-aged man, but I'm an awkward teen, but I'm bracket racing. The randomness that I won the race is amazing. And when I get out of the car, they were there to greet me. And, you know, my dad gives me this big hug and the emotion on his face and that moment that we had together is what I'm chasing. It's not about going racing. It's about getting that moment again. Project Pontiac is about seeing me and my dad together at the track one more time, but with a car that can run an HRA Super Street. Jay Blake is out there. What's up, Jay? My buddy, Jay Blake. Sammy Eubanks. My buddy, Sammy, Sammy did a concert on the air the other day. Shane Tecklenburg is in the men's room at the Lord's uh, tap house in uh, where the hell is it? Anyway, good job, Sammy. Final strike 94. Joe, do you have any insight on Heights health issue? Hopefully it's not serious. I agree. Final strike 94. Hmm. Um, I reached out because they're going to be on the show next week. Austin. Jimmy and Thomas are going to be on the show next week. Of course, my first question was, how's Robert? I did not reach out to Robert because I want to respect people's space. But I was told 100% confidence he will return to the seat of the funny car as soon as this uh, procedure situation is over. That gave me confidence to tell you that story. Mike. Took drafting classes three years in high school, discovered the machine shop there. That was when I became a machinist for life. This is a real issue. We need to find young people that want to do this job. The machine, the Rottler F69. Oh, my God. Folks at Rottler, this thing was insane. But you still have to have someone who knows what they're doing, what they're looking for, and how to put it in the machine and how to operate it. It's not just like a George Jetson job where you're just pushing buttons. Derek, do you think they will allow teams to do something in attempts to grab an e ET speed record that hasn't been done in the NHRA? Um, look, 
you know, the firsts, right? The, the second that they announced that they're going to run nitro cars in February in Bradenton, I said, every big number that you've ever dreamed of is going to fall. You might see a 3.599 in top fuel. You might see a 340 mile per hour run. There's, it's going to be very difficult to not do that. Because, uh, you know, they stopped going to Palm Beach International Raceway, formerly Moroso Motorsports Park, because the weather conditions at that time of year were too good and it was not applicable. They weren't learning what they needed to learn for a regular season. This is uh, Bradenton is right across the state. It's right. Uh, you know, it's at sea level. It's in February. If you were to get a nice 58 degree Florida afternoon, you're going to see all those numbers. It's going to be hard to not. Plus, track prep. How do they prep the track? What are they going to do? Are they going to duplicate NHRA's track prep? What? How are they going to handle all of these things? And they're going to, the pro knows what they're doing. The way I look at it is this. We saw 300 to the eighth. I fully expect all the other the numbers to go at that race because it's an unsanctioned event track prep, whatever it is at an NHRA national event. If you make it exactly the same, you're still going to, it's going to be hard to hold the cars back. In my opinion, it's going to be hard to hold the cars pack. Um, it's going to be exciting. You know, like I, I had a conversation with a couple of people and they say, well, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't count because it's not at an NHRA national event because I was in advocation mode. I was advocating like, Hey, this is something that's going to happen. Has everyone considered it? And I had a lot of people tell me it doesn't, it's not a record if it doesn't happen at an NHRA national event, which is a statement of fact. But it's hard to unsee a photograph. Taking the limiter off won't speed the cars up unless it's on the limiter before the finish line. Nice uh, crab maneuvers around the gear, uh, says uh, Billy. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know the answer to that. What else? Scott Palmer, when waiting to happen. I, I like that. Are they putting the driver's safety first or promoting the race? See, I don't want to go there, Scott, because I, the answer is they're putting the driver's safety first. Okay. These are people. This, these are the drivers. This is pro. They're putting the driver's safety first. There is no way, in my opinion, they're making all kinds of tracks, vi uh, changes. Victor is spending a whole bunch of money. Alvarez, who owns the track, who is like a young person who loves drag racing and should be uh, supported spending a lot of money to do things to the track that aren't done for safety purposes. So the answer is there. I have no doubt from the people that are involved that safety is number one, but like, I don't want to go there. Is NHRA involved in the pro event at all? No, they're not. Is it, pro is involved pro professional racers organization. Who is that? It's Alan Johnson. It's Chad head. It's Tony Stewart. It's Bob Tasca. Okay. They're not going to do anything to jeopardize themselves or their business or the profession, in my opinion. But I'm not, you know. There you go. All right, guys. I think this was a fun little program here on uh, Tuesday. Does everybody know Daniel Wilkerson is going to be on the show Thursday, 12 noon, maybe with Tim? Does everybody know the WFO app is going to be sunsetting and you should resubscribe to a different feed? Whether, whatever, whichever feed is your choice. Safety first, always, period. Nobody wants to talk about safety because it's a dark topic and nobody wants to speak anything into existence. But we should always be thinking about safety, most importantly. The crew chiefs, the engineers, the everybody should always be looking at the cars, the tracks, and thinking Always, 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 how can we continue to push safety forward? That is the ultimate ethos of our sport. It's the number one thing. It's the number one thing. Safety. Safety, safety, safety. It has to always be first. And I'm pretty confident that the people that I deal with on a regular basis know that. But it's worth saying it again. And again, and again, 
just in case. Hey, if you want some WFO swag, I've been told the sale is over. There will always be another sale, guys. Just follow me, WFO Joe, on Twitter and Instagram. Follow the WFO feeds, WFO Radio. Follow Monica. She does the best job of pushing out when the gear is on sale. Fire! Good stuff. The Indy Tower is gone, man. It's gone What are they going to build? What's it going to look like? How amazing will it be? All of it. Are they going to get it done by Labor Day? That's another one, like TikTok. All right, guys. Great day. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing the show. Subscribe. Click the bell. Never miss one. Get a notification, all that stuff. And we'll see you on Thursday, 12 noon, Eastern Time. Daniel Wilkerson, Superstar.